In this video, we're going to discuss transformers and motors and just go an overview of the function and magnetism and how it works to cause work to be transferred. Start with transformers, it's a really simple form just to go over basic um, electricity. We know that when there's current flowing through a wire, it produces a magnetic field around the wire as electrons flow. So we have a magnetic field, very weak magnetic field, but it's still a magnetic field. But if we take the same wire and we put it into a coil, we are multiplying that magnetic field around it. It becomes stronger because we are multiplying uh, the, the current in a small space. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coils or turns. So it will be eight times stronger than having a single wire. And that's very important because it is causing a stronger magnetic field for current to, uh, uh, to flow through. And because it's flowing through and it's magnetized and also magnified, it is causing a stronger magnetic field. So as we look at this and we put this into a transformer, a transformer is basically a coil of wire. And we have two sides of it. We have a primary side, and we have what we call an iron core, or sometimes an air coil core, and we have a secondary side. Primary side, secondary side. The primary side is where the power is actually introduced. The line voltage is introduced into the primary side to cause a magnetic field to be created and it will be induced into the secondary side. And because it has a magnetic field, one of the things that happens with electricity and current flow, like I said, that when current is flowing through a wire, it produces a magnetic field around the wire. However, if we take a wire and we put it into a magnetic field, it would actually produce current flow through the uh, wire. And as we move it through the magnetic field, it would change the direction of the current flow in the wire. So that's interesting to see because that's how a transformer actually produces electricity at a different voltage in a transformer. So if we look at this, this primary side, uh, has a certain number of coils or turns, while the secondary side will have another set of turns in that coil. So as we look at this, and it's a ratio based on the voltage. So let's say this has 100 turns, and the secondary side has 25 turns. So it would be a ratio between 1 to 4, a 1 to 4 ratio. So we look at the 4 turns here to 1 turn here. So the, the way this works based on this, the number of turns, it will change the voltage accordingly. And so if we look at this, if we have 100 volts coming in on the primary side, and there's a, uh, a 4 to 1 ratio, this will have 25 volts on the secondary side. And is inducing its magnetic field into a smaller number of turns, which will reduce the voltage that will come out to the other side of it. And this is a basic magnetic field being introduced into one side to another side which we call induction, induction. So this is basic a transformer and how magnetic fields can be created to cause uh, voltage to be changed. Of course, this is what we call a step-down transformer. A step-down transformer is taking the primary voltage and dropping it down to a lower voltage. The, another type of transformer we may find what we call step-up transformers. And a step-up transformer will take the line voltage and actually increase it. 
And applications where you find step up transformers is like power companies. They have generators and they will produce voltage and they will increase the voltage to very high voltage, like 20,000 volts. And they increase it high so they could transmit it through high power lines to send it long distance with very little losses. And when they get into the towns and the cities, they will reduce the voltage back down through transformers again, which will be a step-down transformer. So a step-down transformer, like I say, taking higher voltage and dropping it down to a lower voltage, and an HVAC fill, we use a step-down transformer as control voltage to lower the voltage down to, for thermostats and other type of controls to make it safer to handle. So it would be a, a safety issue with high voltage and having shocks or electrocutions because of the low voltage. So this is how we look at uh, magnetism and changing the voltage in the systems. The same concept works for motors also. I'm going to make a diagram of a basic diagram of a electrical motor. This has two sets of windings. We have a common coming in, a common tie point which is joining the uh, two windings together, the two coils, we call windings, the motor windings. It has a run winding and it has a start winding. And these two windings are designed to have uh, current flowing through it to turn a rotor. A rotor is the part of the motor that actually turns. And what happens is that these two different windings. The start winding has more turns through it, which give it a very strong magnetic fill to induce it into the rotor. And it will cause the rotor to start turning. However, the start winding, because it's so many turns and very small wires, it pulls extremely high amperage during startup and it cannot stay in the circuit. If it stayed in, it will end up uh, damaging or burning up the motor. However, the run winding is the windings is used to keep the rotor turning after it starts up. So both of these are uh, inductive coils which inducing into a rotor to cause rotation to make the motor operate. So, we call this type of motor a split phase motor. A split phase motor is designed to have two sets of windings, one for starting and one for running. So this will be the run winding, this will be the start winding, while we have a common coil to actually send power in and also send power into the run winding. Power, we will use a switch, some type of switch, to energize the start winding and will open up during the startup of the motor. After the motor starts up, a switch will open to de-energize the start winding. So this is a really very basic operation of a um, motor operation using magnetism and using induction to show you how induction is used in the HVAC fill to operate motors.